Is minimalism making a comeback? Was it ever gone? And is it something that we're all going to want? Those are the questions we are going to be answering in today's video. I hope it's gonna leave you super inspired no matter how you answer those questions and what the definition of minimalism is going to be in your life. We're gonna discuss the style. We're going to discuss why I do think that it is coming back as a huge trend and how it's going to be different than it has been. So I'm gonna load you up on inspo. We're gonna have a great time hanging out together today. I hope you'll hit subscribe if you haven't already. And let's jump into today's video. Let's talk about what the definition of minimalism is because let's be honest, minimalism is not only just about the way that we decorate our homes, it's about how we dress, it's about how we eat, it's about how we live. It really is a very lifestyle driven idea. Uh, according to the Oxford American Dictionary, minimalism is a trend in sculpture and painting that arose in the 1950s. Architectural Digest defines it as, generally when discussing minimalist homes, people imagine clutter-free rooms with white walls and a lack of unnecessary furnishing or decor. The look is often seen as a close cousin to Scandinavian or Japanese interiors, where both cultures have long embraced a less is more ideology, which is really good because I made my notes and that is exactly <laughs> what I have written down. So I am so glad that uh, Architectural Digest and I are in agreement on this. I think that there's so much more to minimalism than just simply not having as much stuff in your room. In fact, we recently did a decor mistakes video referencing some of the decor mistakes that we make a lot of times and kind of adapt from this minimalistic movement because minimalist, minimalism has been a powerful movement since the 1950s and it's one that still affects the way that interior designers think about their spaces. It influences what you see in the store. It's a very powerful thing, this minimalistic movement and it's still here. And I've been thinking a lot about is it coming back? Why do we think it's coming back? Well, what is it about it that really draws people in? I do think that the simplicity of this style, it makes it definitely feel more achievable. It makes it feel like something that anybody can do, which I think is a huge positive. I also think that the clutter-free calm of this style really just helps it to feel like something that we just want to live in. It, do, it feels like it's just gonna be a rest and a retreat from the chaotic world outside. I think the focus on architecture is something that for me has always been one of the driving forces that always brings me back to minimalism. I love the idea that you know, the architecture of your space is the first and foremost thing that you should be looking at and designing your world, your life, and your home around that architecture, it can be very powerful. Of course, it's not gonna surprise you that I also love the fact that minimalism tends to be monochromatic. You can let me know how you guys feel about it down in the comments. Could you do a minimalist home in color? Yes. You might just be choosing less of those colors so that you don't have too much busyness. But technically, minimalism really is associated with the monochromatic kind of neutral color palette. And I do think that that comes, kind of ties into the idea of calm and that sort of thing. I think that minimalism's focus on using purposeful items, things that are necessary, is also one that drives a lot of us because it can be overwhelming when our home is just full of too many things, things that we don't need, things we don't use, and we just find ourselves just, there's just, just, there's just chaos around us and it can just be a little bit overwhelming, right? So I do think that this idea of having purposeful, useful things in our home is also very powerful in the minimalist movement. I also like the fact that it uses natural light and simple and clean lines. Basically, it's very calm, it's very peaceful. It tends to have a bit of a focus on nature, nature coming in, us seeing out into nature. <laughs> The real question we need to answer right now is why do we think minimalism is making a comeback? Was it ever really gone? Mm, no, of course, minimalism was never gone. But was it the most popular style? Has it been the most popular style in the last couple years? 
I think it hasn't. I think styles like cottage core, French country, grandma core, uh, grandma coastal, <laughs> a lot of those styles have had their heyday in the last few years. I think a lot of that has come from the COVID, all the lockdowns and just all the stress that was going on. And a lot of people just wanted to go back to something that felt homey and nurturing. Minimalism can be those things, but it also carries with it something that those other styles for me just never has. And that's a piece of a, fe <laughs> a feeling of calm, if I can get all these words out at once. I think that's why for me personally, I avoid styles like cottage core because it's just too much for me. I, too much pattern, too much color, too much going on. You're gonna start seeing it coming up on mainstream websites about interiors. You're gonna see it on Wayfair. You're gonna see it on West Elm. You're gonna see it on Pottery Barn. You're gonna see it everywhere because there's a return to this idea of calm. And I think it's a little bit in response to the fact that we aren't at home anymore and we are out in the world a lot more and life is back to being a little bit chaotic and we need a place to come back to that's just the opposite of all of that and it's calm and it's peaceful. It doesn't feel like it's a lot of work to maintain and I think that's why this style is gonna be really having a massive comeback. When you think about how to use minimalism in your own home, no matter where you are in the world, the best part about this is that you don't have to do anything with this style, except just look around the house that you already have and start noticing the architectural details that you already have in your home. This, this style is built on the architecture of the space that you have, and that's what makes it so special. So you can most definitely have a traditional style home. You can see we've left a lot of the traditional elements in our own home. Right now we have very traditional uh, windows and doors in our own home, and you can have a more minimalistic style with this. You don't have to have a, a, a contemporary home or everything modern in your house, but the architecture of your space is what the style is really driven by. I think that focusing in on the window light as well, window and of course like natural light, right? This style is all about having that nature coming in and you seeing out into nature. And so I think that taking down really heavy drapes and blinds is an incredible way to really embrace not only the architecture of your windows and of your space, but the natural light that you have in your home. It will help everything feel more alive and more special. This is something that just, I just geek out over guys. I just get so excited about it because I'm like, this is so simple and you can do this today. So next up, I think removing some of the clutter is a key component of this style. And I have been going through my house like crazy. <laughs> I think we have taken out yet another, at least eight carloads. We've had at least 10 pickups from, from Facebook Marketplace where people are coming to get things. And I am just clearing the house. And every time I do that, I just feel like this enormous weight coming off of me because I really just don't like having a lot of stuff cluttering my life. And I definitely don't like having every cabinet opening and things falling out on me. It's not just the clutter out like what you see, but it's also what's inside of your cabinets. It's what's inside of your drawers. So I love it because it helps me to only have the things in my home that I really love the things that just really matter to me. And when I do this, maybe this is why I just felt like I just needed to make this video because maybe I'm just the one coming back to it. And if I'm the only one, then I'll just go there alone for a while until you guys are ready for it. But I just feel lighter. I feel happier. I feel relieved. I feel like free. And I think that's why for me, this is a style that I go back to over and over and over and over. And I'm like, no, I'm gonna be more maximal. I mean, I'm even just, even bringing down the amount of stuff like on the coffee table and the consoles. I still think that my house isn't really so minimalistic, but it, it's getting there. 
And I think what it does is it just gives you room to breathe just a little bit in your home and in your life and in your closet and the drawers. And it really helps you to just, I find that when you have so much clutter, you just can't find anything. And I find that so frustrating. And this actually started a couple weeks ago when I was redoing some of the decor. Actually, I was gonna redo the decor in the closet. I went down to the basement. I've got a couple shelves down there. And I was like, great, I'm gonna go look for a vase. And it, 12 hours later, <laughs> I resurfaced from the basement. <laughs> Like, why did I come down here in the first place? I was like, oh yeah, I was looking for a vase for the closet, okay? Because I cannot deal with this much stuff down here. And I just, I just released, I released it all back into the wild, right? Like someone else is gonna be able to put this stuff to better use than me just having it shoved on shelves and I can't even see what I have, and my style has evolved. I need to be real about where I am and where I'm going and what I want, and boom, minimalism came out of nowhere. When you're thinking about decluttering, think about how you can use some closed storage also to just simply close things away so they are out of sight. Also think about some baskets and some bins that will also just help you corral items. But I do think that the act of decluttering is, I think it has to be one of the most therapeutic things in the entire world. And right now is a great time to do that. The other thing, I'm just gonna let you in on a little bit of a trick, okay? This is something that I've been doing for years. I allow myself to be less minimalistic in certain parts of the home. So when it comes to my closet and fashion, I kind of love to have lots of options and I get a little bit bored if I only have a few things to choose from. So that's not gonna surprise any of you if you've been following my living channel. And especially if you also watch the Amazon Lives, you guys get to see a lot of really fun products coming in and out. So, and I would say also the kitchen is the other area where I tend, oh, books. What am I talking about? Am I really minimalistic at all? <laughs> okay, maybe I'm the worst person on the planet to ask about this style, okay? But I do think there's something in it, okay? Because I start to pare things back visually at the very least. I even went through my own books and started pulling out books that I've read but I'm not going to reference again. Ones that I feel like I ordered because I was really just looking at different styles and I have settled on the fact that this book no longer serves a purpose for me. And I, I passed forward a humongous stack of books, which is, that's the hardest thing for me to part with. But I do think that you can choose certain areas of your home to be more, more minimalistic in and others to have a little bit more in. Final thing is that I think you should also consider the color palette because previously we thought the minimalism was all about the color white, right? White on white on white. Minimal meant like minimal everything. <laughs> Even minimal color to the point that you have hardly anything. You're just in a, in a box, right? You're in, in a room with pretty windows and a bed mattress, you don't even need the bed, <laughs> right? A mattress with a pillow. I mean, we're not living in a prison cell here. You are actually allowed to live and want to be a little bit more minimalistic. I think you're allowed to have some extra pillows. You're even allowed to have pillows on the sofa and on your bed. But like we were talking about in the other video about some of those decor mistakes, you may not want to load a million of them on the sofa. You might want to pare it back a little bit. You might still have a bed that you sleep on and maybe some artwork, but it doesn't necessarily have to be super, you just don't, you just maybe just don't need so much of it, okay? But I do think also a big key component to this is actually painting out the walls. Painting out the walls and layering on the neutrals don't go for all white. Even in my own house, you can kind of see, I have white walls, but I do still have layers. You can see the greenery, you can see the wood tone. There's black in here, there's shades of white, there's shades of beige. Um, even the fireplace, there's dimension here. All of these textures and colors really help your home to feel warm and approachable. Make sure you do leave some comments down below and let's discuss this idea of minimalism just in general. Is it making a comeback? Are we excited about that? Do we want it? It's just spill the beans. Tell me all your thoughts. Saying that you hate it is perfectly okay as long as it's done in like a constructive way. <laughs>
I don't like it when people are like bullying other people. That is, it bothers me no matter what side of the fence people land on. We're learning together. This is a community of people who are interested in learning and growing and becoming. So um, if you're not a part of this community, make sure you hit subscribe because that just means that when you hop onto YouTube, you're gonna see our videos and your suggested and also over on your subscription page. But thank you so much for joining me. I cannot wait to read your comments and um, I'm gonna go hunt down on my coffee. I just realized I don't have one. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.